it's, it's really all up to Neil in this case because he's the man who has a capability to abort from that point on. If everything isn't set and ready to go from that from that time on, uh, you're 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 it's probably too late. So the three astronauts are now going through the procedures just described for us in their tiny spacecraft on top of this enormous rocket. They have about 160 cubic feet in there, which is about the size of the interior of a small automobile. But it is so carefully designed, they have packed into that small space a cockpit, an office, a laboratory, a radio station, a television station, a kitchen, a bedroom, a bathroom, and a living room. Frank, we're about to see it begin. It's, uh, what is that? Seven minutes, 7.55. Frank McGee, you there? Yes. And uh, it's getting mighty close. And um, though we take this in part rather matter-of-factly, I can remember, and I'm sure you can too, David, when we were kids, that one way of separating the nuts from the normal people was to ask a person, do you think a man will ever be on the moon? And if he said yes, you chalked him up as a nut. Right. <laughs> and if he said no, you said, well, that fellow's all right. <laughs> well, it's about to happen. Well, Seven David, well, there mm -hmm. it sits out there. The culmination of... Uh, well, 25, somewhere between 25 and 33 billion dollars. The skills and dedication of about 300,000 technicians, 11 and three quarter years of time, the solemn but uh, certainly risk-filled pledge of a president, some heartbreaking failures and some stirring successes. This is a day of little kin to that October 4th, 1947, when the shrill and persistent beeps of Sputnik as it uh, wheeled about the autumn skies, shoved us unprepared and awkward into the space age. And this day certainly bears little resemblance to those bleak days of 1958 when vanguards and discoverers and Junos and atlases were blowing up on their launch pads. Jack King is about ready with an announcement, Chet. We're going to switch to him now. Set on control, we passed the six-minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission, and this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff, will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We've just passed the two-minute mark in the countdown, T-minus one minute, 54 seconds, and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. T-minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T-minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back it's been a real smooth countdown. We pass the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading.
30 seconds. Altitude's two miles. Oh, well, in Houston, you're good at one minute. Downrange, one mile. Altitude, three, four miles now. Velocity, 2,195 feet per second. We're through the region of maximum dynamic pressure now. Set eight miles downrange, 12 miles high. Velocity, 4,000 feet per second. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. This is Houston, you are go for staging. Inboard cutoff. Inboard engines out. Come inboard cutoff. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. There it is, right on the tip. And ignition. Eleven Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. Flight is smooth. So far, uneventful, perfectly on time, perfectly efficient. If you watched, or since you watched, the liftoff with us, there is really nothing to say about it. What can you say about a site like that? It's a site that reduced, the, there's a huge crowd out here of reporters, visitors, VIPs, and others milling around and talking and gossiping and handshaking and telling jokes and making a lot of noise in a busy, vivid scene. And there's a, NASA has set up loudspeakers outside this area here. And so when the last minute or so of the countdown begins, they hear it over loudspeakers, uh, 10, 9, 8, exactly as we all heard it. And it was notable that when it got down to about a minute, everybody who had been lollygagging, gossiping, talking, fell still and silent, knowing, knowing he was about to see something truly fantastic, but not really knowing what it was. We all know what we saw, but in another way, we don't know what we saw. Um, you not only see it, hear it, feel it, inside and outside. And a minute or so after that unbelievable event, as you have heard, if over your television. The astronauts are talking to the ground and reporting on the facts and figures of the flight and somebody here a minute ago was saying they are as matter of fact and unexcited and calm as if there were taxi cab drivers reporting in and saying we're on Maple Street headed for downtown. Uh, they're no more excited than that.